You're watching FNN, the Fox News Network. This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. You're watching the only news that matters to Malcolm God. Smack him a gob, it's time for the only news that matters, and I want to thank Wayne Noon's son, Paul Noon, for that smack him a gob intro. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Wayne. Wayne is part of the Rack Salad Reviews. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. And if you want to send a smack him a gob intro, send it to this email right there. Right there. You see it right there. Send it there, and I'll put it up in the order it was received. Thanks again, Wayne. Now let's get into the only news that matters. And starting it off with some very sad news. Monkey singer and guitarist Michael Nesmith died Friday from natural causes. He was 78 years old. So that would make him the last monkeys. Only Mickey Dolan's left. Very sad news. Um, so rest in peace, Michael Nesmith. And my condolences to his family and his friends and fans. All right. Next story. Dawkins is entering the studio to do a new album. How's Don Dawkins sounding these days? Damn, I guess the next docking album is going to be a spoken word album. Next story, Halloween singer Andy Darris didn't realize something bad was going on in the world until long after the pandemic hit. Man, what rock was this guy living under? Seriously, long after the pandemic hit? I mean, well, I didn't really read the story. I just saw the headline and I'm like, what? Yeah, I didn't do no research. So if you have a problem with the only news that matters not doing any research, well, you get what you pay for. Next story. Chris Jericho ordered by doctors not to sing at Fozzie's London concert. Well, the joke's on you, doctors. He doesn't sing at the concerts. He mimes to a tape. And I have some inside information that when Chris Jericho went to the doctor, he handed them free tickets to that Fozzie show in London. And they left for a couple minutes, they came back and said, don't sing. Next story. Brent Smith says Shinedown's upcoming album will be viewed as controversial and provocative by some people. I find it controversial that you guys are still making albums. Next story. Biff Byford says Saxon's early albums were just as good as Iron Maiden's The Number of the Beast. I agree. I know many of you don't, man, but me, man, wheels of steel, give me strong arm of the law, denim and leather, power and the glory. I think they're just as good. This is a FNN. special report. Now reporting. David Dr. Fark. Saxon rules. Next story. Tom G. Warrior clarifies comments about Celtic Frost tribute shows. He said it would not be a permanent project. Now, I saw the initial story he did where he said he would do a Celtic Frost like tribute to Martin Aim for, you know, a couple shows. And then I guess people just saw that or maybe it was a clickbait headline and he had to clarify, look, look, it's not a permanent project. People should do their research. This is FNN. ABC News special report. Now reporting. David Dr. Fark, Celtics Frost rules. Next story. Former Megadeth bassist David Ellison to appear at halfway to Halloween convention in Illinois. Do you think he's going to cancel when he finds out it's not the show your ween convention? Next story. David Ellison selling album and tour used Megadeth gear. Oh man, I didn't realize it was this bad for the guy. Now I feel bad for what I was saying, that little joke. Um, very sorry, Mr. Elson. This is terrible. 
over a really stupid, mongolic, idiotic move on his part, but I don't think he deserves all this bullshit. I feel really bad. I should edit out that show your ween convention line I put in here. Hopefully, I will remember to edit that out. Next story. Bill Ward on the birth of Black Sabbath. He said, we were different. I know we cause a few problems. Black Sabbath rules. They rule my world. They don't give me no problems. I mean, the only problem I ever had by the original Black Sabbath was that press conference they had on 11-11-11 announcing a world tour. They were going to make an album. And then later on, it turned out the management screwed Bill over. And Tony Geezer and Ozzy did nothing about it. I mean, shit, when I found that that was going on, this was me an hour later. Next story. Tony Iommi says, I wouldn't want to do an 18-month tour again. But that doesn't say Black Sabbath wouldn't do any one-off stuff. Well, Bill Ward not too long ago said he can't do any tours no more. He's not able to drum. So, hey, man, more power to everybody out there that wants to go see Ozzy, Geezer, and Tony Iommi without Bill Ward. Enjoy Backstabbing. Next story. Gene Simmons slashes asking price of Henderson Mansion. This is something he bought like a year ago in Vegas. And the reason why he's selling it just a year later, he explains. My family doesn't want to go there. My wifey wanted a place in Whistler because she's Canadian. So I bought a place in Whistler. And then awesome. she said, I want a place in Malibu. So I bought the top of the mountain with two, two and a half acre views forever house in Malibu. And then she said, I want to move back to Beverly Hills, so I have to buy a Beverly Hills. Did Shannon ever say to you she wanted a place in Vegas? <laughs> no. Well, that was the problem. And in case you didn't know, Gene Simmons is in a band with Paul Stanley of Kef. Next story. These ducks visit Dee Dee Ramon's grave every day. The headline's kind of misleading. What it is, there's a couple that throw food near Dee Dee's grave and all the ducks go over there to eat every day. And uh, I really don't have a joke here. I actually would like to be serious and say, I miss Dee Dee Ramon, I miss Johnny Ramon, I miss Tommy Ramon, and I miss Joey Ramon. The world sucks much more without them. The Ramones rule. All right, next story. Sammy Hagar released a vacuum cleaner that he guaranteed would suck as much as he does. But some people that purchased this are complaining, saying that when they turn it on, all it does is play his shitty music. One guy did come to Sammy's defense saying, hey man, mine played three lock box. That's worth more than vacuuming my dirty apartment. All right, next story. Motley Crue's Nikki Six says, we never intended on getting back together. Wow, whoa man, I, what? That is the most shocking thing I have heard in years. Nikki Six actually telling the truth. Of course he's telling the truth on this very rare occasion. I said it before, that Motley Crue farewell tour with that bullshit contract, he really did think Motley Crue was over back then because he was gonna go on to do 6 a.m who had a hit before and he figured this is going to be my hit machine for the rest of my life and then when he saw that didn't work out which led him to go back on that bullshit contract he had i mean i'm serious it is definitely because 6 a.m didn't take off i mean i'm almost positive about this all right final story 6 a.m has no plans to record more new music or perform live again I knew it! See? No, nah, I wasn't almost sure. I was totally... See, this is why. This is the only news that matters. <laughs> Do it again, I'm not doing it. One, two, three. Wait, wait, wait! Oh! <laughs> God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that was quite a kick. Well, that's it for the news people and pickle whistlers that watch me because you love to be offended because this is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, Doctor Fuck, you suck. That's right. And check out my podcast, the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast, and the Vieira Vault. 
And if you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And click that little notification bell. Right on, everybody. Stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath. And smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain.